GarageBand iOS has more than 25 different settings that you can change. Some important, some not so much. So in this video, I'm going to break down and explain every one of them. Let's go. If you'd like to learn how to create, record and release your best music using GarageBand on iPad or iPhone, check out the videos linked in the description. And while you're there, you'll find timestamps so that you can jump around if there's a particular setting you want to know about. Let's start with our basic settings. To access these up in the top right corner, tap on the settings icon. The first setting is our metronome and count in. This tells GarageBand whether we want to have a count in when we're recording. With it off, when we hit record, it'll start recording straight away. If we turn the count in on, it will give us a one bar count in before it records. And with the visual count in enabled, this will actually show us on the screen that four counts in before we start recording. You can also change the type of sound from a click, wood block, hi-hat, rim shot, or no sound at all. So you can get a different kind of count in sound. And you can adjust the level of the metronome in here too. So if you're finding you're hearing that clicking noise in your recordings, you can actually turn down the volume of that metronome sound. Next, we have tempo. If we tap on tempo, we can change this in a few ways. We can tap the up or down arrows to change this by one BPM beats per minute, or we can tap and hold and drag up to go up by more and drag down for more drastic changes. We can also tap one, two, three, four on this button here and that will actually detect the tempo, which can be super handy to set your speed. Our third option is time signature. We have three to choose from here in GarageBand, 4-4 four, four, or standard time, 3-4 or 6-8 time. And we can adjust those by simply tapping on each of them here. Do keep in mind that if you're using loops and drummer and other things, 4-4 four, four is gonna be your best bet because a lot of your Apple loops are in 4-4 four, four time. Next, we have key signature. This we can set to any major or minor key signature. So if we want to change, the key, we can change it here. This button here, follow song key, means that any virtual instrument, so the green MIDI tracks out here, will actually change key. So if we have something in C major, it will actually transpose it up a tone if we move it to D major there. And again, you can choose major or minor and turn that follow song key off or back on. Time Ruler is something we've only recently had here in GarageBand. We can turn that on by tapping and you can see here our ruler now goes from bars and beats to the actual amount of time. This is handy if you're recording things like podcasts or video, audio, anything that doesn't have musical elements. So you can change that to your Time Ruler or tap it to go back to your bars. Next up is Fade Out. So with this enabled, your entire song will actually fade out at the end. Now the reason I don't recommend using this is you don't have any control over it. I prefer to use automation to both fade in and fade out. And there's a video in the description showing you how to do that if you want to check it out. But if you just want to fade out the end of your entire project, you can turn that one on. Notepad is exactly as it sounds. It's a notepad. So we can actually start putting in all of the notes about our track. If you wanted to add lyrics in here, you can do that. Or maybe you wanted to put your chord progression in here. You can put anything that you like in the notepad. And this is handy if you're collaborating or you just want to store some notes right here in the project. There's your notepad. Jam session. It's the one option I've simply never covered here on the channel. And that's because it's a bit of a throwback. What you can do is if you've got multiple people with multiple devices, you connect them together, you create a jam session here, and you can, as the name suggests, have a jam session. However, because it's using Bluetooth and wireless connectivity, there's some latency. It doesn't work exactly the way that you'd hope. So play around with it if you want to. That's where you do it. Create your session, join up with someone else and uh, jam away. Next, we have our advanced settings, which we will go through in detail in just a moment. But that's how we get to those advanced settings that we'll cover very soon. Next is restore purchase. Now, you may be thinking, what purchases are there in GarageBand? Isn't it free? It is, but it actually used to be a paid product. And there was actually a pack that you could actually nominate to buy right back in the day. Now, if you happened to do that and you don't have it here, hit this restore button and it will do it. Uh, as you can see there, no items available to restore for me at this time. And last, but by no means least is the help button. So if we tap on help, it is going to open up our help section here. This is the 
the GarageBand user guide. We can jump into the table of contents. We can read through all of the options. This is also available on the website. You can actually read it. You can download the PDF and you can have fun with that one. It's related to another option, which is up here in the top right corner. If we tap on this button, you can see this gives us context sensitive help. It gives these little yellow boxes that tell us all of the different things on the screen. Super handy if you're just on a screen, you know that something's just there, but you can't remember exactly how to do it. Hit your help button and you'll be good to go. It's time to explore our advanced settings. To get to these, tap on the settings option and then tap on advanced. Let's go through these one by one. Multi-track recording. With this turned off, you'll notice that we don't have these monitor and record buttons over here. If we tick it back on, they come back. Now you do need to be using a multi-channel audio interface for multi-track recording to work. And the way this works here is if you've got two different tracks here, you can set one to channel one, you can set another one to say channel channel two, and then we can actually record both of these and even monitor both of these at the same time. It's very handy if you're recording, say, a guitar and a vocal or a stereo pair of microphones. You can set them both up to record, but to do that, you need to go to your advanced settings and turn on multi-track. 24-bit audio resolution. If you do nothing else with this video, jump in and turn this on. If you have it off, everything's going to be 16-bit audio, which is still good, that CD quality sound, but you might as well have the best. If you've got gear that supports 24-bit audio, this will give you the best quality recordings. And the even the internal loops can sometimes be at 24-bit quality, meaning you might as well have it on to have the best quality audio. Run in background. This allows GarageBand to actually run in the background. You can run other apps in the foreground and have the audio from GarageBand running in the background. I've shown this in other videos. It's great if you need to open up another app, say, to check your lyrics, or you just want to be listening to your GarageBand mix without being here in GarageBand, you can turn run in background on. However, as it says there, it can cause a few issues. So if you're finding problems and you've got that on, maybe turn it off if you're not using it. Bluetooth MIDI devices. Yes, if you're using a Bluetooth MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller, you'll need to actually dive in here to make sure that it's attached and usable in GarageBand. It's not just setting it up by your normal Bluetooth method here in your iPad or your iPhone. You do need to jump in here to the advanced settings, Bluetooth MIDI devices, and make sure you add it in here. And finally, send MIDI clock. If you don't know what this means, you probably don't need it on, but if you're using multiple apps and you wanna make sure that your MIDI tracks are synced between GarageBand and your other apps, turn on the MIDI clock. If you don't need it and you don't use it, you can leave it off. Now that may seem like we've covered absolutely everything here in both the basic and advanced settings, but just to be a little bit challenging, GarageBand also has some additional settings outside of the app. I like to call them the hidden settings because it sounds kind of cool. Let's dive in and show you those now. To get to these, you'll actually have to leave GarageBand. So I'm gonna swipe up from the bottom and go into your settings app by tapping on the settings here. And if you don't know where that is, just slide down from anywhere, go to your search bar and type in settings and it will find the settings app. Jump in and let's take a look. On the left side of the screen here where you've got all of your general and control center and other settings, if you keep scrolling down, you'll notice that eventually you're gonna get to this. All of your installed apps are here and they have some additional settings. Did you know this was here? It's pretty cool, it's hard to find, but once you find it, you'll find that there's some handy stuff in here for not only GarageBand, but but for a lot of your other apps too. Let's tap on GarageBand and dive into these hidden settings. First up, we have Allow GarageBand to Access. Now this is standard for many of your different apps and this just tells GarageBand what it can and can't access. So Bluetooth, local network, microphone, camera, notifications, background, app, refresh, and where it's gonna store your documents. This is probably the most important part of this. I highly recommend you choose iCloud Drive instead of on my iPad for this one because it means your files, your projects are going to be automatically backed up. Down into our settings, global preferences, knob gestures. Now this is set to automatic by default. We can change this to either linear or circular. So if we go back to GarageBand, I'll show you the difference here between these two. Let's first set this to linear and swap back over to GarageBand. When we've got a knob like this, if we have linear set, all we need to do is drag either up or down or drag drag left or right. And a lot of folks find this easier to use than the other option, which is circular. Let's tap to set this to circular, come back to GarageBand and look at our knobs. 
moves. Now you kind of use more of a circular motion. And if you just go left and right, you can see it kind of just jumps around like that. So some folks like this because it's more like an analog control of a knob, but some folks like me tend to find it jumps around a bit. So if you want to change that, that's where you do it. Next is cross torque protection. This says it prevents against cross torque from a guitar connected to the headphone jack. Now, I never really worked out what this was for until someone recently reached out to me and said, hey, when I plug GarageBand into my amp, I can't hear my guitar. Well, that's because cross torque protection was on and it's on by default so that you don't get that feedback. If you want to turn it off, if you're finding that for whatever reason you've hooked up your guitar, you're using an external amp and you can't hear it, you can turn that one off. But beware because you could get some feedback. Automatic recording length. This tells GarageBand to adjust the length of your project to whatever is recorded or whatever is important. So turn this on if you are just doing some freeform recording and you want to make sure it captures more than eight bars and you don't want to set your sections up or if you're importing some audio and you want to make sure that the entire audio file is imported, not just the first bit. And with this set to automatic, you'll see that if you go here to your song sections in the top right, it'll say automatic there instead of you having to set the section lengths manually. Support MPE controllers. MPE stands for MIDI Polygraphic Expression. Now, if you have a controller or a device that uses that, turn it on. If you don't, you don't really need to, but you might as well have it on in case you happen to hook up one of these devices. Keyboard note labels is a really handy feature. If we turn that off and we come back into GarageBand, let's open up a keyboard instrument and I'll show you the difference that we have here. If we go to our keyboard regularly, you can see here that we have the C's but we don't have any of the other notes labeled. If you would like to get those note labels, come in here to your hidden settings, go into your GarageBand, scroll down and turn on keyboard note labels. And now if we scroll up again, check it out, like magic, we have each and every note labeled, including our black notes with both their sharp and flat names as well. Super handy feature. Enable Apple designed audio unit extensions. This enables you to use extra plugins and effects. With this turned off, they won't show up. But if you turn this on, you can use these additional plugins. Let's show you where they are once again by returning to GarageBand here. And if we go in here to our mixer icon, our plugins and EQ, hit the edit button and hit the plus here, there's our regular 10 effects. But if we tap on this one, audio unit extensions, these are all the audio unit extension plugins I've downloaded. And if we scroll to the very bottom, check this out. We've got these, we've got 15 plus different plugins and effects that we can use here. These Apple ones, they're actually really cool. And I cover those in other videos here on the channel that you can find down in the description. Reset GarageBand. Once again, I cover this in detail in a troubleshooting GarageBand video, but if you're finding that every time you try to open GarageBand, it crashes or you've got a corrupted file that keeps trying to open and not working, what you can do is tap that one. Next time you open GarageBand, it will actually reset. Now it won't reset everything. You won't lose your project files, but it will reset some of these options. So you will have to go in and re kajigger all of the options that you've already set up, but it is a great little tool for when you need it but don't touch it if you don't need it. Under privacy, this is a relatively new one. It's called Reset Identifier. So what this does is it resets the identifier used by GarageBand to report statistics to Apple. So if you've been using GarageBand a while and you're like, I really would prefer not to have my data that's going back, say my GarageBand crashes and it sends data back, I would rather not have that identified to me. You can reset that. The next time you open GarageBand, it'll be like you're opening it for the first time and it won't link any future data to the data that's already been sent. And just because I'm a completist, these aren't really settings, but if you want to know what version number you're running, here's the place to look for it. This is version 2.3.15, the current latest version of GarageBand. You can also check out the license agreement if that's the kind of bag that you're into and the acknowledgements here. This is kind of fun. You get to see all of the different acknowledgements that GarageBand and Apple have given over the many, many years that it's been running for. But that's everything we have here in our hidden settings. And in fact, 
That is every single setting we have here in GarageBand. Did you find something new in here, something you didn't know about, or maybe just a refresher or something that you'll file away for future use? I hope you enjoyed this one. Hit the like button down below if you did. Make sure you're subscribed and check out the other videos in the description to learn more, and I'll see you next time.